Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur. My name is Sean Walchef, founder of Cali Barbecue and Cali Barbecue Media. I wanted to give a special shout out to Toast, our primary technology partner at our barbecue restaurants in San Diego, for believing in this project. Thankfully, we've been able to reach millions of people with this show that just launched, launched in January. So thank you so much. Today, we have an incredibly special guest. This is one of the reasons why we started this show was to make an impact on the industry, to make an impact on restaurant owners. In life, in the restaurant business, and in the creator economy, we learn through lessons and stories. Today, we have none other than Chef Robert Irvine on the show. Chef, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. That's a great welcome. And uh, excited. What are we going to talk about? Lots of good stuff, I hope. We're going to talk about lots of good stuff. So our primary focus with this show is to talk about storytelling. And uh, there's no one making a bigger impact with storytelling than, than the celebrity chef himself, the entrepreneur, the businessman, and more importantly, the leader that's making an impact. I'm going to start off with our, our favorite random question, chef. Where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage, or venue? Wow. That's a great question. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that very differently than what most of your, your guests will answer. So my favorite stadium place um, is probably Afghanistan, um, simply because in Afghanistan and Iraq, um, I've entertained troops, I've fed troops, I've moved troops, uh, and, and it's very exciting for me um, to be able to go into a place that has nothing and create something. In other words, food or entertainment or exercise. Um, and that's what we do. We, we are a very unusual uh, uh, group of gypsies, I call us, because we travel the globe and we all have talents. And when you put all the talents together, we create magic. I love it. So we're going to go to Afghanistan. We're going to go to a base um, we're going to put you in front of the troops, and we're going to talk about who is Chef Robert Irvine. But we all know if we go to Google and we search your name, there's 37 million pieces of content that come back. 37 million. If you go on Instagram, he has over a half a million followers. He has 17,000 followers on TikTok because he's not going to be left behind on TikTok. He's on Facebook. He's on YouTube. He has multiple companies, multiple books, multiple TV shows. But more importantly, it's the work that you're doing that's inspiring when you're giving back, when you're building a foundation. Can you talk about what do you plan on building from now into the future? I think, first of all, you know, we talk about the hospitality industry, right? Whether it be restaurants, hotels, mom and pop bars, you know, they are, we are the backbone of this country, right? And, we, and we've got to preserve that. So for me to, to continue to build, not only on the shows, Restaurant Impossible, Restaurant Rivals, and all the other things that I do, is to build a safe haven for people to not be afraid to ask how to be successful when you fail. Failure is part of life. Uh, and if you haven't failed, congratulations. I've failed millions of times. Um, and I'm sure it won't be the last. Uh, I'm sure there's some more failure coming. But I think it's to, to teach people that failure is okay. And, and you learn from those failures to get better. So for me, what I continue to build our foundation, I just come back from, from uh, Boston, literally uh, doing a big golf tournament out there to build programs um, for our iBots, our, our uh, feeding heroes, uh, our dog program, all the things that, that we do to give back to our foundation for our first responders, our active duty men and women, our gold star families, our Medal of Honor recipients. I feel that we are the hospitality industry is is best positioned to help people. And when I say that, it's it's part of marketing, if you like. It's the new marketing. If you do something good, you better feel good about it, but it's going to come back to you tenfold. Not because you asked for it, just because people believe that you're doing something good for somebody else. And I think that's my continued future as long as I'm on this planet. Uh, everything we do, we have 11 companies, but everything we do is geared towards our foundation. 
you know, how do we make money to give money away, whether it be dogs, uh, wheelchairs, um, programs, visits abroad, uh, reunions, all the things that we do in, the, in those programs. So one of the most important things that we have with this show is to teach people the power of technology, the power of storytelling in the hospitality business. I want to bring you back to July 1st, uh, 2012. You sent out a tweet, and that tweet was at Gary Sinise. Thank you very much. I appreciate you and have followed you for the longest time. You rock, and we have to do something together. Yeah. Robert Irvine the celebrity chef, the man on Food Network, the man with as much as an influence as you, you reached out, you asked for help. Bring me back to the tweet and bring me back to the beginning of the relationship with Gary. Well, it's funny because I've been, I've known Gary for many years and you say the, that date, uh, we've been together. I talk to him pretty much every day, literally every day. Um, I always wanted to do something. I, I'd been in the White House since 1996. I worked with the military across the globe. Um, and I wanted to, I don't know, do more, I suppose, is the word. Uh, so I reached out to Gary. He was going to Alaska. I was going to Honduras to a special forces base called so Sotokan Air Base. I was going to spend the 4th of July week there uh, feeding them. Uh, and he was in Alaska, and and that's how we actually met. That tweet. We've been friends ever since. We created uh, a thing called the Invincible Spirit Festivals, where I would feed eight to ten thousand people um, in hospitals all around the country and around the world. And he would put on a show, um, and that's how we started. And since then, we've done oh my god, so many other programs. But about eight years into it, I started. Um, to say we need to do more, you know, uh, not only with Gary, but we formed our own foundation, the Robert Irvine Foundation, but that works with TAPS, the USO, uh, Fisher House, uh, and, and, a, and a thousand other uh, foundations, because I feel that, and this is a true feeling, believe me when I tell you this, I feel America has forgotten uh, about our troops, about our restaurant. And, and by the way, this all falls in together. So when I say this, you, I'll tell you why. You know, with our troops, our families, our gold star families, those people that have given the ultimate sacrifice. And then on top of that, through COVID, we forgot, and, and I'm blanketing here, right? So we forgot about restaurants. We forgot about the places that we loved. And here we are with the recession, quote unquote, whether you call it recession or not, I don't care what you what, what you want to say. Here we are with less money. And we're at that position again where we're losing mom and pop businesses overnight and every night because, you know, what was a case of eggs at $48 is now $174. And we can't keep passing on these these expenses to to our guests because they're in the same position, or most of us anyway. And I think that America has forgot that we have to support small business. We have to support our military. We have to support um, money going to hospitals to take care of people. And I, I think we've lost that. Somewhere it, it, we, we've gone into, oh, let's protect ourselves. Yes. And I understand that mode. I do. But I also believe that if we take care of each other like we're supposed to, the world would be a better place and we and we get through this stuff a lot easier. The the reason why I wanted to bring up that tweet was because I heard you in an interview talk about it and talk that you had never met Gary, but you had sent out a tweet. And that's what I want people to really understand, restaurant owners, people, hospitality professionals, is that we've never had a time to connect with people like-minded people, people mm -hmm. that can eventually become friends, eventually become colleagues, eventually become business partners, eventually become mentors. And for you to have the courage, for you to have the courage to take yeah. this out, you've sent over a hundred thousand tweets and going through those tweets from you to Gary about your appearances, about all the places, all the troops that you have impacted. But what's even more powerful is all the people that are saying, thank you for caring. Thank you for giving a voice. Thank you, Chef Irvine. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for doing these things. And the momentum only starts 
at 2012 to now it feels like you still don't feel like you're doing enough. No, I can feel it in your, I can feel it in your communication. I, I, I say this. All that's the what's time. so inspiring to me. I say this all the time and it's very true. We can always do a little bit more. We can always go further. We can, you know, I, I, I believe we're blessed. You are blessed. I am yes. blessed. You got this podcast and you just said it in January, and here you are, look, touching millions of people. It's amazing. These these smartphones that we have that we just both held up, um, I always think food is hope. Well, so is this. There's a lot of negativity on this. Sure. I my world is you don't want you don't like me, that's okay. Don't follow me, don't talk to me. Or if I can help you, yes, then tell me what I can do for you. Right. I think there's far too much hate in the world. And yet I believe that that social media is a good thing as well as a bad thing, obviously. But it, I if you watch my shows on a Thursday night, you will see me live tweeting with every I live tweet. Yes. I'm the guy that does it. Yes. And I and I continue that even though the show is um, on haters till next week, every Thursday at eight o'clock. I've got hundreds of thousands of people that yeah. I actually talk to literally sitting in my house or on a plane or wherever I am. Yes. And that's my Robert Irvine restaurant and possible family. Yes. And if they're hurting through COVID, like we did, I had um, this brainchild way before the, the Bill Pulse and all these other, these people that are, that give money away. I wanted to make sure people who get food. So I talked to Walmart and Amazon and we, we, we started giving away. You answer three questions off the show with $50 gift certificate. Right. And yes. you could print it off your, you could print it off your um, computer, go straight into Walmart and spend it on food or, or anywhere. Right. And then from 50 up to $500 because everybody was suffering. Uh, and we still do that. And that's how we've we've kept in touch. I mean, Fit Crunch, the, the bars, we did all the, sanit uh, the, the sanitizer for the tri-state area for firefighters, for, for doctors, for nurses, for National Guard. Um, we give out um, bars, we give out food. We, and that's what I believe we collectively, that's you, me, it, we, we put on this planet to help people. It, money's no good to you when you're dead. Money's no good to you when there's nothing to buy because you can't afford it. Money's no good to you unless you share it. Yes. That's my philosophy. It will never change. Well, it's a beautiful thing because you embody the fact that you're going to continue to create. You have over 4,000 employees. Is, did, I, did I hear that correctly? 4,600, yes. <laughs> 4,600 for people that are listening that, that there are publicly traded companies that have less employees than that. A lot of them. So yeah. <laughs> we're talking about a serious enterprise, many layers of management, but you're at the top. And I understand how leadership is so important to you and how you use this form of leadership, this boots on the ground philosophy of how can you make an impact every single day on your organization, hire correctly so that it goes throughout. So Robert Irvine, whether you're in person, which is obviously always the best, but if you're not, the people in charge are going to run your organizations. How has this philosophy magnified as you've continued to grow, grow your businesses? I think it's really, it's a great question, by the way. It, it's surrounding yourself with people that are way smarter than you. And, I, and you'll laugh when I tell you this. I am not the best chef cook in the world. I'm pretty good. You drop me into Afghanistan, I can feed 35,000 people with nothing, right? Yes. You ask me to cook for a president of the United States, I've done it six times, you know, six different presidents. Um, it really depends on, on, I've got great chefs that have been with me. Shane Cash has been with me 26 years. Amazing. Uh, since we started way back when, uh, Daryl Moyles, 10 years. And, and, and all these guys, um, I think we've learned together. And they know who I am. There's one thing I will, will never accept in my companies. And that is, it's a military culture. We stand side by side, back to back, you know, front and center of each other. And if one of my people ever bath mouths the other one, or treads on them, they're gone. 
I will not accept that. If you have an issue with somebody, great, straight, talk about it, let's fix it. If we can't fix it, somebody's gone. I don't believe any one of us is better than anybody else. I'm, I, it's my name on everything. It's my money. I allow people to have um, an opinion, right? And you know what opinions are like, right? Everybody's got one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? So I don't mind the opinions, and I don't mind if we have issues, but then you have to share the problem and your proposed solution to that problem. And it doesn't matter whether it's food, bars, liquor, clothing. It doesn't matter because every year, twice a year, we get our top 50 folks in a room and we say, okay, this is where we were last year. This is where we think we're going this year. And these are the programs that we want to run or, or take on for our foundation um, because everything we do is based on the foundation. I can tell you that. It's not about money. It's about how much can we give to other people. Yesterday, in um, uh, I'm just outside of Boston, I gave away uh, or I gave back somebody's life. A Vietnam veteran who was in so much pain, his wife with cancer, uh, she was his sole um, uh, care caregiver, but she's got cancer. He's in a wheelchair. He can't even move. So we bought him a, a brand new iBot, put him in it yesterday. Talk about dry eyes, dry eyes. There was not one in, you know, 400 people. And all he wanted was to have less pain. And yet, like I said, foundations like ours and Gary's and TAPS and and Fisher House and, and all these other folks are, are doing so much because it's where a government fails their premise. They, they promised to take care of our men and women in uniform, uh, their families, and, and we fail miserably at it. And that's why we do so much work. So as, as a chef celebrity, as someone that's built such, such a big personal brand, you know restaurants better than probably anyone on earth. You could easily have opened up hundreds, if not thousands of restaurants, yet you chose to open up one restaurant in the Pentagon, another restaurant in Las Vegas. Now you are you working on virtual dining concepts through for the Robert Irvine's American Heroes, which we'd love, we, I would love for you to talk about. Please talk about why, why, obviously it goes back to the premise of giving back. To the foundation but talk about why do you think about restaurants differently is it because of your exposure to so many independent restaurants i love restaurants um and, and let's get into the reality of the restaurant business if you yes. ever owned a restaurant obviously you do if you if if i take an average of a million two in revenue a year and then what i'm left with that net profit at the end after working 100 hours 200 hours you know the deal yep um, it's simply not worth it when I can say, look, I can open a, um, a protein drink, right? Yep. Put it onto a truck and sell one truck of that protein drink a week and make more money in that week than I can make in a year in a restaurant. And then people say to me, well, yeah, but it's not as much fun behind the stove. Is you're, you're absolutely correct. It's not. But time, time to me is of... of essence you know i'm 57 years old i want to change the world um the pentagon restaurant was something i've always wanted we're the only full size sit down restaurant in the pentagon i get to see every living head of state there is on the planet uh through there at some point in time um and i got that because i wanted to prove that we can do better at feeding uh, in twofold not only in the military but also in our schools yes so nutrition was, so it was a showcase for me. Uh, Vegas, I did a TV show in Vegas, um, met the owners uh, of the M Hotel. Years later, they sold. I ended up being bought by the Tropicana. I now have a restaurant in Tropicana for the last four or five years, which I love. But I don't want to open chains of restaurants um, because if you look at the majority of chefs, they don't own their restaurants. They take a percentage of whatever the net or the gross, depending on their deal is. And great. And you can put your name and whatever. There's one thing I've learned about our business. I own our distillery. I own our manufacturing for Fit Crunch. We own the manufacturing for food. So we, we control 
from beginning to end. Yes. Um, and I think that's really important when, you know, your, your name's on the, on the line. Because we, we can say, and I'll get to virtual kitchens in a second, but you, we can say, oh, um, let, let, let's put um, 15 restaurants on cruise ships. And I've had the opportunity to do that. Sure. But they've got to hold the standards that I have. And it's very hard to do that when you're not there every week or you're not there every day. Or, you know, um, that's why I've had restaurants and sold restaurants because I'm not there every day. Yeah. The beautiful thing about Tropicana and the Pentagon, the Pentagon took me two years to vet everybody because it's a very secure location. Um, and we feed who we feed in there. Uh, same with, with Tropicana. I've had the same staff in Tropicana since I started because wow. I handpicked them. I had four months of training with them, with my kids, with my wife, because I want them to understand my philosophy about food, but also about people and service. Um, so I don't, I don't think, look, if somebody comes and said to me, there's a great deal for a restaurant and I think it's good, great, we'll do it. But I can literally, we, we now have, oh my goodness, 300, 400, uh, SKUs of product around the world. Wow. So, wow. um, there's an old money. There's an old saying, right? Make money while you sleep. Yes. So a restaurant opens from this to this, you know what you're going to make. Um, and the headaches you have making that, although I do love to cook and I do love to interact with people, but I feel that there, there are, there are ways in which as a chefs like Jose Andres is doing, we can make value added products that help the restaurant business or hotel business or cruise line business because of the staffing issues that we have right now. You know, nobody wants to be a cook. My goodness, when I was 11 years old, I wanted to be a cook. I still want to be a cook. Yes. Um, I think we, I said a second ago, food changes lives. It gives hope. It, it's a redeemer in, in, um, in many ways, but also helps us talk about the tough conversations, race, creed, color, money, whatever it is, you do it over a plate of food, it de-escalates situations. You said Chef Jose Andres, and the things that I see that you both do in your worlds, you know, him with World Hunger Kitchen, you doing yeah. for the troops, it's so admirational for someone like me as a restaurant owner, because on a micro level, every person that's listening to this show, if you're in the hospitality business, we do this because we have it in our DNA. It's in yeah. our blood, taking care of the village, giving back. And we give back so many times when we don't even have it in our budgets to give back. But because people ask, you want it done for a charity, we'll do it for a charity. You want it done for the fire station, we'll do it for the fire station. Whatever it is, however we can help, that's the business that we're in. Yet you both are using it on this global scale on this global scale, and it's still not enough. I feel like you're just scratching the surface of the impact that you believe you can have because not only of the work that you're doing on the ground, but because it's magnified, because it's yeah. magnified off across Twitter, across TikTok, across Instagram, YouTube, plus you're leveraging it and you're talking about it. You're not hiding the fact that this is your foundation. You're leading with the fact that yeah. you have 4,600 people that, yes, they might work for the for-profit side of your business, but it's all going to the nonprofit side of your business. And, and, and there's, a, there's a thing also that my, for me, I have a responsibility to each and every one of the people that work with me. They don't work for me because they're all way smarter than me. I don't care whether you're wrapping a protein bar, whether you're putting, it doesn't matter what you do. And I mean that sincerely. It's about taking care of those people. Because if you take care of people, you talk about magnification, when they go out, they are your magnification, they're your billboard, they're your, you know, they wear the t-shirt, they, they drink the Kool-Aid, they drink, you know, because that's what it is. We yes. all believe, I, we, we, we hire people based on not the job that they can do, but how are they going to fit in without a team, yep. right? Because you can hire people and pay $27, $30 an hour right now, because that's what it is. Yep. But they may not fit the mentality of the group of people you have there. And it's all about leadership. You talk about leadership. The military taught me so much about leadership, about understanding that each person is so different. You can have five people on the line in the kitchen, or I can have 
you know, 400 people on a, on a line in a protein bar company. And each one of them has something different. They have their own worries. They have their own, their own, you know, health conditions. They have, and it's up to me to know, and it really is, to know that their kids' names, the problems they face, so that if I can help them in there, and, 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 and this is not just a BS answer, if I can help them because they need something, then guess what? Hey, you need what for what? How much you need for do that? You've been a great employee to me here. Take it. Because yeah. I, I, another person inspires me, we're talking about is Marcos Lemonis, because he has the same, the profit. He has the yes. same idea as me. He's worth, you know, a lot of money, three plus billion dollars. But he takes care of people the same way I do. And that's why we get on so well. And this, this interaction now that we're having, now I want to amplify what you do because you amplify the good in other people. Then, and that's how this all starts, right? You film, and that's how Jose started with, with uh, World Central Kitchen. Oh, it's one person, it's one friend. It's, oh, Robbie, you know somebody in Afghanistan. Can you get me a plane to get me to there, right? And it's those connections that we all have that are so unique. And there's one thing I, I, I do love about it is, is, is it starts off with ego. Yes. And then when reality hits, if you have ego, you're gone. <laughs> right? And, and we all know, you, you know, just, you work with people like that. It started that way for me, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Geez, I was the biggest egotistical guy you can ever imagine. Really, I made it on television. I had a nice car. I had a nice house. And then what? Then what? Yeah. And then you realize how stupid you are in my case. And, you know, what, what are you, people say you're very uh, um, God fearing. I am because I believe we're here for a reason. I believe that, you know, I've been blessed in order to bless other people. My food, um, the stuff with my foundation is my ministry to other people. To, to Television is a ministry of, you know, you watch Restaurant Impossible, Dinner Impossible, whatever the show is, and it takes you away from your life for an hour and feel good about who you are. And then you go out and you see somebody struggling. And this happens to me every week. And, and I get a tweet and somebody will say, hey, Robert, you know what? I was getting a cup of coffee and there was a guy on the side of the street and I, I didn't give him money. Like you said, I got him a cup of coffee and a sandwich or a coat or a pair of socks. One person, I get a goosebumps right now. One person does that, then we've then we've achieved what we set out to achieve, because that's a continuation. It's a knock-on effect that now we've got a bunch of great folks around the country, around the world, that are doing that. And it started off with, as you said, this. I made more friends on this, yes, than I could ever make just talking that's, in a bar somewhere. That's the smartphone that is holding up. You know, yeah. Robert, I, I was I was very fortunate and I say fortunate that I never met my father. I was raised by my grandfather and he was born in a village in Bulgaria and he gave me this life of privilege. He gave me this endless curiosity. He taught me, which is something we talk about on the show, is to stay curious, to get involved and then to ask for help. The asking for help was the hardest lesson for me to learn as I got older, as I opened up my own restaurant, as I became my own leader trying to figure out as an entrepreneur, we think that we need to know the answer. I think that now looking back when I was growing up of all the things my grandfather did, and they were subtle things because he was a medical doctor, but he would go and take me all around the world and we'd be fortunate to go and travel right. to Paris. And he would take me to the front of the line. He, would, he always wanted to be next to the tour guide. He always wanted to ask the question. I was like, Grandpa, you don't need to ask the question. He was always asking the question, even though he was the smartest person on the tour. But he wanted to know from the person that was there, who taught you in your life to have less of an ego and to ask for help? I joined the military really young. You know that you can read about that. Um, I was always the youngest leader in any situation I've always had. And mentors to me, and this is um, really people laugh when I say this, a mentor to me is the guy cleaning the street, is the guy wrapping a hamburger, who's the guy, and I'll tell you this story, and this is how I quantify this. I was the executive chef, uh, very young age, of the Trump Taj Mahal Atlantic City, Donald Trump's restaurant, 
and they they walked in as a chef and they said there's 1137 names on this list they should all be fired and i said well there's only 5000 employees in the in the whole casino that does 784 million dollars a year and 15 million dollars in food and beverage wow i said so if every one of them sucks like you're telling me um that's not possible it just simply is not possible how about you give me a couple of months and let me go through the list and figure so for four months true story i would go to work at six o'clock at night nobody knew i was I would sit, jeans, t-shirt. I would sit in the bathrooms at night. I would go to the coffee shops at night. I would go to the, and I would listen. Um, number one, they were doing drug deals in the toilets and bathrooms and, and whatever else at, at that time, 1997. Um, and I learned about the people that were working in this business. I had 50 people in a coffee shop doing 5,000 meals a day and half of them would come in, swipe their, their, their ID card in and go and work in another casino. So I was paying people for not being there. Oh, wow. Oh, it was unbelievable. I, I, we had theft beyond your wildest dreams. Um, and I had to figure it out. And I was the guy who just sat there for four months. Eventually, I fired 320 people. When I come out in a uniform four months later, I had fights, I had death threats, I had all these kind of things. But and I hired a kid. Um, named Ruben Espinal, all right, for a Dominican Republic guy, hired him, but he just, he just wanted to work, right? Just give me work, give me something to do. And every day he would bring me a plate of food and say, this should be the special in the restaurant. This should be the special. It was never good enough at that point, right? I said, but I'll tell you what, take some books, take any of my books, read, go online, you know, whatever. Years later, he's now an executive chef of the of the hotel I used to run. Right. Wow. So with his kids and his wife, I helped him paint his first apartment. Da, da, da. So he and we used to have a and the reason I'm telling you a story is getting back to your question. Because I had a dishwasher that said to me, Hey Robert, why don't you use? I was making lasagna one day. He said, Why don't you use plantains? And I said, Plantains. He said, Yeah, instead of the lasagna. And I said, well, that, I've never done that. I mean, so he showed me how to do it. Literally, I made it. It was probably one of the best things I've ever eaten in my life. Wow. And, you know, there is a dishwasher teaching me how to make lasagna with plantains. And from that point forward, I think I've always looked at everybody's equal, no matter where you come from, what you do. I don't know your life. You don't know mine but I want to learn about you. I want, I want to know about you. I want to know about your family. I want, because that just helps me be a better leader. And, you know, we talk about suggestions and what should we do? I ask people because look, I know this much of the world. They know this much, but it may be different to what I know. Yeah. Hence the plantain story. So I think inspiration comes in many forms, uh, TV books, people, life in general i i study people i'm a big people watch i can sit in an airport and, and watch people all day all night i mean i got i got home at 2 30 this morning because uh, the plane fuel system broke down i was in the airport just watching people getting so frustrated over something that that wasn't the pilot's fault it wasn't their fault it was you know and you can't do anything about it and you just sit there and watch and i think human nature is an amazing thing and we've all got, you know, things we've got to get home to or things we've got to do. But when it's not somebody else's fault, when it's not their fault, you can't take it out on them. Um, so I think inspiration and calm and, and thought process and persistence. And, and we go back to what you said a minute ago. Leadership to me is the number one thing in everything I do. I lead a life the way I lead it because it's an example of other people. I set expectations for my people and I hold them accountable for those expectations. If they don't get to the expectations, I know immediately because I get it every day. I then say, well, okay, well, why are we not giving them the tools? Are we not giving the information? Do they not understand the information? And why are they not understanding the information? And then we go back three or four times and listen. 
it's easy to chastise somebody because they didn't reach a sales number. Why are they not reaching it? Or, or you know, why, why can't we put 5,000 eggs out? Well, we only have one pan chef. Well, why didn't we know that? Because yeah. no, you know. So I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of inspiration. There's a lot of learning uh, that we do every day. Uh, and I can't expect somebody to do a job if I don't give them the tools to do their job, whether it be information or, or pots, pans, cleaning, whatever it is. The humility and the grace that you have as a leader to feed another human allows you a different perspective on the world, especially when you think about the positions that you've been able to serve in, the powerful positions, serving the heads of state, serving presidents. In all your observations, what have you learned from the most powerful men and women in the world of how they interact when that food hits the plate? I I can give you the answer right away. Um, I go back to hope, right? One of my biggest geek out moments, if you like, and I don't have many of those because I'm not <laughs> impressed by many folks. Um, I got to cook for Clint Eastwood, um, James Kahn, who just passed away, uh, Ted Allen, and, and a lot of celebrities uh, at a dinner in Hollywood uh, for Gary Sinise. And one thing I learned from them all, or, or those people that, that I've just mentioned, they were so blessed and knew they were blessed to be able to do the jobs they do and to be able to write a check to something that is greater than themselves. I think for me that, and to, and to work with the leaders of our military, that when I was a cook in the Navy, I could never, even I worked with admirals and whatnot, I could never go up and say, hey, sir, you know, that uh, today I can go up to any head of state, any um, leader of, of our military and say how I feel respectfully and what I don't agree with and have a conversation that makes sense. You know, we talk about one in four of our active duty men and women right now today as we're talking on this uh, zoom call are food insufficient how can that be right and our active duty military we need to change that i was i was speaking the keynote in monterey california last week or the week before uh, the international fresh uh, produce association and i mentioned about school feeding and there was some school teachers and some school um uh, folks in there um and they disagreed with me because I think that we need to do more in, in nutrition and, and help. And they disagree with me, not, not because of what I was saying, well, a little bit because I said there's no good food. And, and I was right, maybe 90% and wrong 10% because there are some great places that do some amazing things. And there are some local governments give more money to schools than, than others, you know, um, and and now, and if you if you look at my social media, you see school dinners and all the people that wrote to me because I want to start an action to make sure that through COVID we paid for school dinners because there was no money, right? There was nobody working, and then they suddenly, oh, COVID finishes, quote unquote. So we pulled the money away. Why, you know? These are kids that, that, that get a can of Coke and, 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 a, and, a, and a Snickers bar for breakfast. And then we expect them to be, you know, good at school and, 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 and do those things. Food is the conduit. And we are, you and me and, and Jose and all these other amazing folks that cook. And even if they're not on TV and they're not on names, they're not, they cook and their purpose is, is, is bigger than us. We want to see them enjoy it. But when you see a kid, and, and I, I did it with Michelle Obama, I watched a, 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 a group of kids in DC. They couldn't have, I stopped my whole TV crew eating breakfast so I could feed the kids. Yeah. And, and that's the power that we hold. And we uh, collectively, all of us, right? Uh, you, me, and, and Jose, and we collectively can, can change that narrative of better food in schools, better food uh, in our military, making sure that people have what they, they I'm not asking people, I'm not saying we should let people sit back and take advantage. I'm not saying that because we all have to work, we all have to pay taxes, we all have to do certain things. 
but collectively we can actually change that. And I, and, and that's the fight every day I get up and I fight yeah. because I believe we can make those differences. So every, every Wednesday and every Friday, we do something on clubhouse. It's an audio app. Um, we invite people that listen to this show for us, you have to be the change that you want to see. And the people that support this show, the people that come on our clubhouse um, calls at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we're so grateful for those restaurant owners, those hospitality professionals. They're supporting this show. They're supporting our mission to have guests like you on the show. Um, every week I do a social shout out, and it's for people that support this show in ways that I can't quantify. And I believe as leaders, it's my job to call out the people that are doing things so that I can do what I do. And um, today's shout out. It's going to go to Eric Olafson. That's my business partner. He was employee number one at our restaurant back in 2008. Um, he believed that we were building something bigger than a barbecue restaurant in Troy Street in Spring Valley. And um, he's continued to support the show as we've grown to three restaurants. We're opening up in two stadium locations. Um, when I told him we're a barbecue media company, he laughed, but he supported it. And when I told him that I was having Chef Robert Irvine on the show, he said, this, this will be the first podcast that I listened to of yours. <laughs> and I put on four different shows, but um, he, he was so, so happy and so honored that we're in a position to, to spend spend time with you. Um, now that we're on entrepreneur, is there somebody on your team, somebody that doesn't get a shout out that, that you'd like to recognize today? Chef, Chef Irvine? I, I, think, I think for me, and, and this is truth, all my team, um, whether it be on the foundation side, the, the fit crunch side, the liquor side, we're one team and, and we share in one voice. Um, and I shout out that as one thing that I learned when I, when I was in the military is, to understand each and every one, which I told you, and we all work on different. Some some value money, some value time off, some value um, um, accolades, you know, pats on the back. I, and I visit all my people, and 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 I know about their families, and I know what they do, uh, and I give them shout outs. I I I would shout out to to all the people that listen to this right? For what they're doing in their own worlds. Yes. To help other people. And don't stop that. Keep fighting as much as it's tough with inflation right now. And, and it's tough with, with guests not having as much money to come in. Hey, make it different. Make the experience great. When they come in, make them feel like a million bucks. You already do this, but go the extra mile. And, and I think the more we, as I say this all the time, collectively can do this, the more our business will bounce back. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I think the charity component is the biggest thing we do. If you see somebody, then feed them. If, you, if, if they're, in, you know, under duress or the families. I know families that they, they're working poor, that go to work, that, that cannot afford food. And they'll go to the, you know, the Golden Arches because they can get four hamburgers for the kids, but they won't even feed themselves. Yeah. That's why our food shelters um, that, that do such an amazing job and, and sh we'll shout them out because um, the, the food centers that give food, that produce food, the volunteers that go there, uh, the church kitchens, which I've worked in many of, um, that do it because, and again, you, you just said it, there's a calling bigger than ourselves that say, hey, we're not all created equal. We're not, you know, some people are way smarter than me and have a lot more money than me. Some people are not as smart as me and don't have as much. Some people, but then let's equalize that. Yeah. Right. And we can do that. And I, and I, I think that's my shout out. So for people that want to give back to the foundation, where, where do they go? What can they do? Restaurant owners, especially, uh, we're a very giving group and there's troops all over the world. There's restaurant owners that listen all over the world. I know that uh, the restaurant owners here in San Diego, anything for the Robert Irvine Foundation, yeah, whenever you're here in San Diego, you're, our kitchen is your kitchen. Our smokers are your smokers. Whenever you need to feed troops. I love, um, so I'm in San Diego. I, I do a big, I do a big event there twice a year at the Naval Medical Center, you know, just, uh, look out at our website, uh, Robert Irvine website, uh, our foundation, Robert Irvine Foundation .org. You can you can pledge there, or you can see what we're doing. Ask to volunteer, um, or volunteer in your own communities. Yep. You know, and if you're doing it, tweet me, let me know about it, and I'll amplify it. There you, know? you go. Yep. We do. There you go. Bring it. Bring it full circle. Yeah, I mean, 
you're doing something good for people. And, and look, people will say, well, you're doing it because uh, you want to get your restaurant there. Fine. Okay. If your restaurant's feeding them and you're paying it, I don't care. You're feeding people. You're helping people. You know, Jose gets paid from FEMA. He gets some money from somewhere else. He's got, you know, somebody who cares? He's feeding people. Yeah. He's doing a job that is bigger than him. And it's bigger than us. It's bigger than FEMA. It's bigger than, and yet, you know, we do it every day. All of it. Our, our hospitality industry, and I would not change my, all the mess ups, all the failures I've had, I would not change them as to where I am now. I wouldn't. So if you guys want to reach out to me, it's at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. That's on all social platforms. I am weirdly available. Robert Irvine, we're going to put links to all of his different brands. Um, please follow them because we, we care about the amplification of stories and we about the stories that are making an impact on the world and the work that every one of his companies is doing to, to give back. I mean, that's such a powerful message. The last question I have for you, Robert, is... Sub sole, sub umbre, virens. Yeah. What does that mean? What does it mean? It means in sun and shade, I thrive. And why is that? Why is that the the? Because the that's the motto. motto of the Irvine clan. All right. Um, way before my time, but my family history. Um, basically, they were they were defenders of Bonnie Prince Charlie, and that was their thing. Sub sole, sub umbre, in sun and shade. No matter what comes, we will thrive, you know, in dark times and in, in good times. So, um, and I have a coin, a military coin with it on the back of it uh, that we give out and the thistles, the three thistles. Um, you know, that's basically the answer to that question. That's what it means. We, you will overcome everything. And it's a matter of time. And, and this is message for all your listeners. When, when you think it's the worst possible time, it's not. There's always somebody less fortunate than you. And you can pick yourself up by the bootstraps. And you can work harder. And you can think smarter. Or you can reach out and ask for help. Yes. Ask for advice. Yes. Uh, and there's nothing and there's nothing to be ashamed of there on a restaurant impossible every week i go to a family uh, and, and do the same thing you know and you know your listeners can help me at the end of december we come back with new shows watch the shows every thursday night eight o'clock and Please you will do. garner information and maybe take away from food from from the situation from decoration from stories um that will help you in in your in your pain or your your suffering or whatever you're going through um, and we have a billion viewers around the world Amazing. from South Africa to, you know, um, in, you name it. Um, I was in Munich a couple of weeks ago being stopped in the street in Munich <laughs> and people saying, you know, Hey, <laughs> all these kind of strange things, but, um, just believe in yourself and believe that, that it's not about you and our world is so small. Yeah. Uh, and it's easy to reach out and ask. Chef Robert Irvine, we appreciate you. We're grateful for you. Please continue to do the incredible work that you do, inspiring so many of us in the hospitality profession to continue to do better, not only just in the hospitality profession, but all business. We believe that every business can learn from, from our profession, which is why we do what we do. So continue to feed people, continue to make impact. And thank you so much for your time. And we will catch you all next week. And a special thank you to our title sponsor, Toast. Toast is the primary technology partner that we use at our restaurant, Cali Barbecue. It is also the primary technology partner that so many of the guests have shared with us on this show. People like Sam, the cooking guy, Stacy Poonkinney, Jeff Alexander. So many times the guests tell us that they're using Toast when we didn't even know that going into the interview. That is why we are so grateful that they sponsor this show. We want you to win. You that listen to this show, we want you to improve your digital hospitality. Toast is built for restaurants and it's built for you. 
Toast is the restaurant first platform that's built for your needs, whatever your size, concept, or ambitions. Improve your bottom line with a customizable platform that's easy to learn, use, and grow with. And it meets you where you are with all the right tools for your price point. If you have any questions about Toast, please DM me at Sean P. Walchef, S H A W N P W A L C H E F. I will get you the link to the right toast contact in your market. It's so important that if you listen to this show, that you win. We want you to be on this show eventually. Let us know that you heard the show, you heard about toast, you implemented toast, you did a toast unboxing in your restaurant. Talk to us about how you've impacted your village, your city, your community. Share your toast story with us. DM me today to learn more and be sure to check out toast.